everybody. It is November and that means according to Austin over at Peanut Butter Gamer, it's Zelda month, which is awesome because I love Zelda if you can't tell from this and this and this. Also this beautiful amazing poster. I don't know if you guys have seen that before but it's awesome. And so in honor of Zelda month, I figured I absolutely had to, had to, had to, had to do this amazing Zelda book tag that was made up by Lorianne Kitty Books and I found out about it through Sam at Novels and Nonsense because she did it on her channel and I added a few questions because it was missing some of the games and so since she didn't think to mention them I just figured I would add in those questions myself and sort of build on what she had already created and so I'm very excited let's get right into it. I just checked my footage and apparently uh, the sunset was bouncing off my mirror and giving me a nice little orange glow there so sorry about that I think I fixed it. Anyways question number one is of course The Legend of Zelda the very first Zelda game that started it all. This game was revolutionary and was absolutely considered a video game classic and so what I have to do for this one is pick my favorite classic book. This one's an easy one for me. I have to go with my absolute favorite classic children's story of all time which is The Little Prince. I love it dearly. I don't have the book with me but I have this lovely sweatshirt. It's great. It's very comfortable. Question number two is The Adventure of Link aka Zelda 2. This was the direct sequel to the first game and a lot of people either really love it or really hate it because it's quite difficult and it was a very big change up from the way you had to play the first game. The book I have to find for this one is a sequel that was just as good if not better than the original. I think I'm going to have to go with The Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin for this one. The first book was pretty good in the A Song of Ice and Fire series and the second one for me was just sort of eh. But the third one was action packed and there's so much happening and it's just so great. I really really like that one. It's my favorite of the series I think. Number three is one that I have added in myself. It was the third game in the series to come out and that of course was A Link to the Past. Many people can consider this to be one of the top best games of all time. And so for this one, I think you should pick out a book that you consider revolutionary. For this one, the obvious choice for me was The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, because what would fantasy even be if we never had this book? Question number four is Link's Awakening, a really sweet little game that is absolutely heartbreaking and arguably the saddest Zelda game of all time, simply because of the way that it ends. And so for this one, I have to pick the saddest book that I have ever read. I don't think this is actually the saddest book I've ever ever read but it definitely made me feel a lot of things and cry a lot of tears and that is The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak which is a phenomenal book if you haven't read it I don't know what you've been doing but do it read it now. Question number five is Ocarina of Time, my personal favorite Zelda, and a lot of other people's as well. It's an extremely big fan favorite. It's the first 3D Zelda to ever happen, and it's a really phenomenal game. The main shtick of it is that you start out when Link is a child, and then there is a time jump where Link suddenly has to become an adult and save the world because it went to crap in his absence. And so for this one, I have to pick a book where the main character is mature. I definitely have to pick The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman, which is the third book in the His Dark Materials trilogy, Will and Lyra go through a lot of sort of coming of age moments in this story where they have to sacrifice a lot over what they want and take on a lot of these really sort of adult and mature responsibilities and you can just see how all of their adventures sort of culminate at this point. Question number six is Majora's Mask which is tied for second in my favorites with another game that we'll get to in a bit. This game is definitely the weirdest and creepiest Zelda of all time but I absolutely adore it. Majora's Mask is the direct sequel to Ocarina of time and in it he falls into this alternate universe called Termina and the moon is about to crash onto this world and destroy absolutely everything. And so Link has three in-game days. You have a counter at the bottom the entire time to save everyone. So time is extremely important in this game. Therefore for this one I have to pick a book where time is an extremely important factor. I feel like I could pick a better example than this one but I, none are really coming to mind and so I'm just gonna go with Vicious by V.E. Schwab. There are multiple timelines in this book and so keeping in mind where in time you are is very important to making sense of the story. Number seven is Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. These games were released as a pair and if you get through everything in one of them you actually unlock some bonus stuff in the other one. A lot of people really really enjoy these games and yet don't necessarily sing their praises. It doesn't really get the attention that it so deserves. And so for this one I'm supposed to pick either a duology or two books that I don't think get the attention that they deserve. This 
one was really difficult for me actually, but the ones I'm going to pick are Will Grace and Will Grayson by John Green and David Levithan, which is a really sweet and really hilarious story, so if you haven't read it, I would go check it out. And The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern because I really fell in love with that book this year and it's still pretty new and I think a lot of people still don't know about it. I don't know, I don't really have a good one for this. Question number eight is Wind Waker. This game is really cute and hilarious and the art style went in a totally different direction with this game that people have eventually come around to loving, but the main shtick of the game is that Hyrule has been flooded and so many generations later there is a new Link who has to save the world and in order to do so he has to traverse the Great Sea. So you do a lot of sailing, a lot of seafaring. And so for this one I have to pick a book that revolves around the sea in some way. I actually haven't read this book yet but it's sitting on my shelf at home and I do really want to get around to it because it looks really good. It's called We the Drowned by Karsten Jensen and it is all about the sea as far as I know so I'm gonna go with that one. Question number nine is Four Swords and I'm gonna lump it in with Four Swords Adventures. This game was originally made solely for co-op. You could play with up to four people because Link could split himself into four versions of himself. And so for this one, I'm supposed to pick a book or a series with the best fandom. I'm gonna have to go with the Harry Potter fandom because I know it's not perfect, but it's full of just a lot of passionate, great people. I just, I just really love it. Question number 10 is The Minish Cap. The Minish Cap is of course the prequel to Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures. It tells you the origin story of the Four Sword and the origin story of Vati. And the main shtick of this game is that Link has to interact with the Minish, which are a tiny, tiny race of people. And so he has to shrink himself down into a tiny, tiny person. And so for this one, I have to pick a book that reminds me of being little. If we really want to throw it way back to my early, early childhood, what the first book that comes to mind is Fox and Socks, a Dr. Seuss book. I was like obsessed with this book. I remember reading it like a million times with my parents. Apparently I just thought it was hilarious. That one definitely reminds me of being very small. Question number 11 is Twilight Princess. This is the game that is tied with Majora's Mask is my second favorite. The story of this game is a little bit more serious and dark than some of the other Zelda titles, and so for this one I'm supposed to pick a book that has a dark theme. I'm gonna have to go with Death Watch by Ari Burke for this one. This book is so cool. It's told in such a really atmospheric ghost story sort of way. It's very unnerving and sort of creepy, and the main themes that it deals with, of course, is death, and so I'm definitely gonna have to go with that one. Alternatively, the other thing this game is really known for is how frigging awesome Midna is. She is your companion in this game and she is like the best. She's the best thing to ever happen to the series. I love her. So many people consider her the best companion. And so if you want to tell me in the comments below what's a book that you think had the absolute most kick-ass, most amazing sidekick. Number 12 is one that was added in by me as well. This is Phantom Hourglass which is the sequel to Wind Waker. Basically in this game Link and Tetra are off to discover a new land, a new Hyrule. And as they're going along they come across this ghost ship and everything gets crazy. Crazy. There are loads of times in this game where everything and everybody is not exactly how they appear. And so for this one, I want you to pick a book where everything is not quite as it seems. For this one, I'm picking Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami. This is my first Murakami book and I really liked it. Throughout the story, there are two different narratives being told and you can tell they parallel each other, but you're not sure how they fit together. And there's just a lot of unknowns. It takes quite a while for everything to be explained and then you can start to tell that, oh, everything really definitely isn't quite what we thought it was at first. Question number 13 is one I also added and that is Spirit Tracks which is the sequel to Phantom Hourglass. In this story Link and Tetra had found a new Hyrule and generations later we come across a new Link and a new Zelda who have to reconnect their world because all of the train tracks, the spirit tracks that have connected everyone have mysteriously vanished. And so for this one I want you to pick a book where the characters do a lot of traveling. My choice for it is The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss because in this one both finally brand branches out a little and starts seeing the world and he goes a lot of places. Question number 14 is Skyward Sword. This of course was the Zelda game for the Wii and it was a very different experience from a lot of the other Zelda titles. Obviously one of the big changes was having motion controls instead of a regular controller but another thing that was really different is the overworld wasn't connected. I didn't personally have this issue but apparently a lot of people had some trouble getting through and beating this game and so I can understand why. There are some parts that can be really really annoying like a couple of boss battles that can be really frustrating if you don't know what you're doing or if you don't have the best shields in the game or just because the motion controls can get a little awkward so I can understand it. But anyway, this one I'm supposed to pick a book that was difficult to get through. For this one I'm going to have to pick The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini, just the whole thing because there is some really great stuff in that series and a lot of really fantastic characters but <laughs> Aragon the main character is a whiny bastard and it was so incredibly difficult to read his parts at times. For question number 
15, Sam from Novels and Nonsense added in A Link Between Worlds, and so I'm going to put that here since that is the next one chronologically in the series. In this lovely little game that might actually be my third favorite, we revisit the Hyrule of A Link to the Past, but many years in the future, with a new story but a similar landscape. And so for this one, Sam wants us to find our favorite spin-off book. I don't think I've actually read any spin-off books. The only thing I can think of is like the extra little Tales of the Beetle of the Bard and like the Hogwarts Library things that J.K. Rowling wrote. I don't think I've read any spin-offs other than that. I've only read like companion novels, which isn't the same thing. So I'm just gonna have to go with the Tales of the Beetle of the Bard, I guess. <laughs> Question number 16 is Hyrule Warriors, which is basically Dynasty Warriors wanted to make a Zelda game. And so it's not canon, but it looks pretty freaking awesome. And it only just came out. And so for this one, you're supposed to pick your most anticipated release. For this one, I'm going to pick a book that actually just came out that I was anticipating for quite a while, which was The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss. It's a novella in the King Killer Chronicles world, and I really, really want to read it. I've mentioned it a couple times in this channel already, but like, I really want it. Question number 17 is another one that I've added, and that is Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3D for the 3DS. These were remakes that look absolutely stunning. The Majora's Mask one is going to come out this spring. And so for this one, I want you to tell me a book that got a fantastic cover change. Classic books get redesigned covers all the time, but I absolutely love my version of Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's so beautiful. The art is so, so nice. And so I'm definitely going to pick that one. And finally, we have the Wii U title. It doesn't have a name yet because it's not coming out for like another year, I believe. And so for this one, I'm supposed to say who I tag. I don't actually know which of you are into Zelda. So I'm just going to tag anybody who loves Zelda and would like to try this tag out. So that is it. That is the Zelda tag. That was a lot of fun and I love me some Zelda. So this was, this was definitely a tag for me. Either tell me your answers to these questions down below or tell me what your favorite Zelda games are if you've ever played them. If you haven't played a Zelda, do you like video games? What's your favorite? And yeah, that's it for me. So this has been a tag video. My name is Jackie and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.